Sharding is the process of distributing data across multiple servers for storage. MongoDB uses sharding to manage massive data growth. With an increase in data size, a single machine may not be able to store data or provide an acceptable read and write throughput. Sharding supports horizontal scaling and thus is capable of distributing data across multiple machines. Sharding allows you to add more servers to your database to support data growth and automatically balances data and load across various servers. Sharding provides additional write capacity by distributing the write load over a number of MongoD instances. It splits the data set and distributes them across multiple databases or shards. Each shard serves as an independent database and together shards make a single logical database. Sharding reduces the number of operations each shard handles and as a cluster grows each shard handles fewer operations and stores lesser data. As a result a cluster can increase its capacity and input horizontally. For example, to insert data into a particular record, the application needs to access only the shard that holds the record. If a database has a one terabyte data set distributed amongst four shards, then each shard may hold only 256 gigabyte of data. If the database contains 40 shards, then each shard will hold only 25 gigabyte of data. In the next screen, we will discuss when sharding should be used. Typically, sharded clusters require a proper infrastructure setup. This increases the overall complexity of the deployment. Therefore, consider deploying sharded clusters only when there is an application or operational requirement. You must consider deploying a sharded cluster when your system shows the following characteristics. The data set outgrows the storage capacity of a single MongoDB instance. The size of the active working set exceeds the capacity of the maximum available RAM. A single MongoDB instance is unable to manage write operations. In the absence of these characteristics, sharding will not benefit your system. Rather, it will add complexity. Deploying sharding consumes time and resources. In case your database system has already surpassed its capacity, deploying sharding without impacting the application is not possible. Therefore, deploy sharding if you expect that the read and write operations are going to be increased in future. In the next screen, we will discuss what a shard is. A shard is a replica set, or a single MongoD instance, that holds the data subset used in a sharded cluster. Shards hold the entire data set for a cluster. Each shard is a replica set that provides redundancy and high availability for the data it holds. MongoDB shards data on a per-collection basis and lets you access the sharded data through Mongo S instances. If you directly connect to a shard, you will be able to view only a fraction of the data contained in a cluster. Data is not organized in any particular order. In addition, MongoDB does not guarantee that any two contiguous data chunks will reside on any particular shard. Note that every database contains a primary shard that holds all the uncharted collections in that database. In the next screen, we will discuss a shard key. When deploying sharding, you need to choose a key from a collection and split the data using the key's value. This key is called a shard key that determines how to distribute the documents of a collection among the different shards in a cluster. The shard key is a field that exists in every document in the collection and can be an indexed or indexed compound field. MongoDB performs data partitions in a collection using the different ranges or chunks of shard key values. Each range or chunk defines a non-overlapping range of shard key values. MongoDB distributes chunks and their documents among the shards in a cluster. MongoDB also distributes documents according to the range of values in the shard key. In the next screen, we will discuss how to choose a shard key.
to enhance and optimize the performance, functioning, and capability of your database, you need to choose the correct shard key. Choosing the appropriate shard key depends on two factors, the schema of your data and the way applications in your database query and perform write operations. In the next screen, we will discuss the characteristics of an ideal shard key. An ideal shard key must have the following characteristics. Must be easily divisible. An easily divisible shard key enables MongoDB to perform data distribution among shards. If shard keys contain limited number of possible values, then the chunks in shards cannot be split. For example, if a chunk or a range represents a single shard key value, then the chunk cannot be split even if it exceeds the recommended size. High degree of randomness. A shard key must possess a high degree of randomness. This ensures that a single shard distributes write operations among the cluster and does not become a bottleneck. Target a single shard. A shard key must target a single shard to enable the Mongo S program to return most of the query operations directly from a single MongoD instance. In addition, the shard key should be the primary field in queries. Fields having a high degree of randomness cannot target operations to specific shards. Use a compound shard key. If an existing field in your collection is not the ideal key, compute a special purpose shard key or use a compound shard key. In the next screen, we will discuss range-based sharding. In range-based sharding, MongoDB divides datasets into different ranges based on the values of shard keys. Thus, it provides range-based partitioning. For example, consider a numeric shard key. If an imaginary number line goes from negative infinity to positive infinity, each shard key value falls at some point on that line. MongoDB partitions this line into chunks where each chunk can have a range of values. In range-based sharding, documents having close shard key values reside in the same chunk and shard. Range-based partitioning supports range queries because for a given range query of a shard key, the query router can easily find which shards contain those chunks. Data distribution in range-based partitioning can be uneven, which may negate some benefits of sharding. For example, if a shard key field size increases linearly, such as time, then all requests for a given time range will map to the same chunk and shard. In such cases, a small set of shards may receive most of the requests and the system would fail to scale. In the next screen, we will discuss hash-based sharding. For hash-based partitioning, MongoDB first calculates the hash of a field's value, then creates chunks using those hashes. Unlike range-based partitioning, in hash-based partitioning, documents with close shard key values may not reside in the same chunk. This ensures that the collection in a cluster is randomly distributed. In hash-based partitioning, data is evenly distributed. Hashed key values randomly distribute data across chunks and shards. The random distribution of data across chunks using hash-based partitioning makes range query on the shard key ineffective, as data will be distributed to many shards rather than a few number of shards, as in the case of range-based partitioning. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.